we need to change the attitudes of uh, traditional mental health services towards recovery because at the moment and I know when I was hospitalized um, it was basically the medical model fix you with tablets that's it you have schizophrenia you you're you're gone basically your life is over and uh, what I've learned through practicing recovery oriented care is that no just because I have a diagnosis of schizophrenia doesn't mean that I am ruined um, so I suppose the change in service attitudes is a massive thing that I think needs to happen in order for us to be recovery focused. You need the support of your management team, you need them to help drive forward initiatives and we actually did a strategic plan for the next five years and recovery is at the top of that and that has been driven forward by the management team but it was in consultation with all members of staff, service users and family members in our area. So it's, I, I suppose, it's like our Bible, what we work to. I think we need to keep, to do what we're doing, continue to build on what we're doing now, so that we're really listening around the table to everybody involved in the process. So service user, family member, staff, doctors, that we're all sitting around together, um, looking for the very best we can do to support the person. That's struggling. Recovery has to be embedded within the service. You know, it can't be an add-on. You know, okay, I'm I'm an advancing recovery coordinator. There's also recovery leads within the Carlo Kilkenny service, but everybody has to buy into it. You know, it, it has to it has to come from the top down. There has to be good leadership around recovery. The person with the lived experience has to be involved at every level of the service. Um, has to be involved with everything everything that we do. Um, the promotion of recovery focused education that's co-produced um, by the professional and, and, the, and the person with the lived experience and the family member is, um, needs to be encouraged, it needs to be funded and it needs to be valued. Um, and I think that would, that, would also, you know, that would help sort of mental health services improve on their, on their recovery outcomes. I think we need more initiatives like what's in RE. We need that to be over, a full over across the board. We need people, the staff and the, hier the hierarchy in the health board to come on board with RE and take it, take it totally on board and to learn what, what, what the benefits of people like me are getting out of projects like RE and, what, and, re and recovery. And we need recovery in the service. I believe education. Education at the primary level for all disciplines coming into services but also for existing um, disciplines and staff across the board. Um, working with service users, working with family members in real engagement at the practical levels of training, co-production, um, and I mean through co-production is developing um, training schedules, training programmes with all aspects, with all stakeholder interests. Um, and then at a broader level, strategy planning, um, real user engagements, family, family and service user engagement within strategies, within planning, that we are delivering. How do we make that a whole systems approach? Rather than just look at individual pockets of excellent practice or individual teams of excellent practice, how do we make that a whole systems approach? Um, that's a major challenge for us, that's a major difficulty that we're facing, even for the likes of us who've been involved in this process for the last three and a half years. We still have progress to make in terms of the whole systems approach. Um, the advice that I would give is you have to kind of embrace it, go with it, look at what's happening within your service at the moment and then see what pieces you want to gradually change. It takes time, it takes effort uh, and it takes considerable input from senior managers across the service to bring across that cultural change.